Today we're going to learn how to make hinges in PowerPoint. As usual, there are three fairly simple steps. One, make the object you want to put the hinge on. Two, make the hinge itself. And three, layer the object to make the hinge come to life. Okay, let's jump right into step one. For this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate the door hinge and it'll be the same technique for the box and the other things you saw. First, let's start with making the door and just draw a rectangle here. Color it orange, remove the outline, and let's add a gradient. Now, I'm not an expert at shading at all, but let's choose this top one here just to make it a little bit more interesting. Okay, and let's add the doorknob. For this, we can just make it a black circle. Okay, and now let's make the door three-dimensional. Go to Format Shape, 3D Format, and let's add some depth, maybe 20 points. And if you go to 3D Rotation and you rotate it around like that, you can see what it looks like. Okay, let's reset it and put it back where it was. Alrighty, we are ready for step two. For this, let's just group the door and the doorknob together before we forget. And now duplicate the door and line it up right next to the other door. What this does is it creates an axis around which your door will be rotating. So your hinge will be right in between the two doors. The reason we do this is because if we don't, the door will rotate in the middle, which isn't what we want. Now the door on the left is just a placeholder. All we really need is an invisible object the same width as the door on the right. Therefore, let's make it invisible. First remove the doorknob, make the fill transparent, and now take out the depth that we created before. Now you've probably already guessed that, that a much easier way to do this is just, just to make a transparent object that's the same width as the door and stick it right next to it. So you can definitely do that as a shortcut, but I wanted to show you this, um, this other way of doing it. Now the last part of this step is to group the two objects together. Then we need to change the rotation to make it look more 3D. You can see that if I rotate it just across like that, it doesn't look very good. So what we do is rotate it down a little bit and across so you can see the depth. Okay, our door is now ready to go and we can move on to the final step. I will say that if you haven't seen my 3D rotating objects video, I highly recommend that you see that first as it covers what I'm about to do in more detail. But basically the idea here is to make something like a flip book where each door is slightly more open than the one before it and it looks like it's opening when you play the animation. The first door is already there, so we add a disappear animation to it. It will disappear just as the next door appears. So we duplicate that, and for the next door, we rotate it 10 degrees along the X. Be careful, though, because if you use the buttons, for some reason it adds to the Y and Z as well automatically. But we, don't, we actually don't want those to change. So it's actually better to add the 10 degrees manually rather than to use the arrow button. After we finish that and increase just the X value by 10, we go back to our door and take out the disappear animation and replace it with appear because it will appear just as the other door disappears. Now make this one start with previous. Now because this door will disappear when the next door appears, we have to add back the disappear animation. This time we make it after previous and delay it by 0.08 seconds or 0.05 if you want to make it go faster. And copy this one again, add 10 more degrees just on the X and line it up approximately with the others. Doesn't have to be perfect right now. The good thing is that the animations are already done for you. You don't have to change anything for now. And just repeat the process, keep duplicating and adding 10 degrees until you're happy with the way that the door's opened. And I'll just speed up the process for you here. 
This might seem really tedious, but it actually goes pretty fast. You kind of start to get in the zone after a while, and you're done actually before you know it. Okay, we're done with that part. Now what we need to do is line up everything nicely. So we highlight everything, then we go to align center, then align middle. Now everything is perfectly aligned for us. One last very important part is to remove the last disappear animation because you do want the door to stay after it opens. And that is the hinge effect. Just for fun, I'll show you the other pieces that were in the intro video. They're done using the same process, just different hinge types. Thanks for watching, hope you liked the video, and stay tuned for my next one.